Court Justice Lord Sumption, who today has written a piece in the Sunday Times about lockdown and the government's approach to easing restrictions. Um, welcome, Lord Sumption. Good afternoon. Your, uh, your piece today has called ministers timid for the approach they're taking. Why? Because they seem to me to have no real purpose in continuing the lockdown other than to spare themselves public criticism. Now, one does understand why politicians don't want to be criticised, but it's the mark of a statesman that you're prepared to stand up for the national interest and not simply to run away before uh, public opinion, especially when you have, in a sense, created that public opinion yourself by frightening the daylights out of people over the, over the last eight weeks and trying to persuade them uh, that this is a much more virulent epidemic than it actually is. The current rationale for the lockdown is incoherent. I say that because uh, the old rationale was you must spread the infections over a longer period so as to allow the NHS to catch up. So that was why there was the slogan, save the NHS. Well, they've dropped that part of the slogan and they've dropped it for good reasons, which are explained in the paper that they uh, published on Monday. Currently, um, uh, the NHS has more than doubled its intensive care capacity. It's an impressive achievement by the government, but they need to follow the logic of it. The crucial fact is that their paper accepts that COVID-19 is going to be with us long term. That is the likely outcome. And it's consistent with the science. Once uh, a virus has taken hold in a population, it doesn't just go away uh, until enough people have been exposed to the disease to acquire immunity or a vaccine turns up. So when the lockdown ends, whenever that is, the virus will still be there waiting for us. Indeed. And so right at the beginning of, of this interview, when you said that there's a lack of purpose, the purpose right now for the government is to keep the infection rate down to levels that the NHS can cope with. And we are at a point where by the end of April, there were 50,000 excess deaths in this country, which about 36,000 were directly related to COVID-19. It's a bit difficult to know what, what the cause of the other excess deaths were. But the evidence is clear, isn't it, that this virus has taken a terrible toll on the population? No, the evidence is not clear to that effect. More than nine-tenths of the deaths uh, are cases in which the death certificate shows uh, that there were multiple causes of death and coronavirus was only one of them. This is a virus that attacks people with really serious pre-existing vulnerabilities. And that's consistent with all the statistical analyses. Yes, but they wouldn't necessarily have killed them at this point in time, would they? They might have lived with them for many years. No, not for many years. I mean, most, almost all of these people are very old and suffering from quite serious conditions, conditions serious enough to be mentioned as a cause of death on the certificate. The overwhelming majority of them would have died a bit later, but not much later anyway. So what are you advocating now? You've, you've said that the current approach is timid and that it lacks purpose. What approach would you like to see? What I'm advocating now uh, is that the lockdown should become entirely voluntary. It is up to us, not the state, to decide what risks we are going to take with our own bodies. Now, the traditional answer that people give to that is, well, but by going out or in the streets and in shops and things, you are infecting other people. But you don't have to take that risk. You can voluntarily self-isolate. You don't have to go into the streets. You don't have to go to the shops. People who feel vulnerable can self-isolate and the rest of us can then get on with our lives. We have never lived in a risk-free world and we're never going to live in a risk-free world. We are going to have to live with COVID-19 because it's going to be around for a long time unless somebody successfully invents and trials a vaccine. So, so yeah, may I ask you then, that. what choice would you make in that entirely voluntary system that you're putting forward? What choice would you make for yourself and members of your household? Well, I make my choices and other members of my household will make theirs. But my choice would be uh, that I would live a perfectly normal life. If the pubs were open now, I would go to a crowded pub with no hesitation. If the theatres were open now, I would go to the theatre with no hesitation. Because this is... For the overwhelming majority of people with no serious underlying conditions, this is 
a very mild epidemic. In, uh, in this Cabinet Office papers published with the National Risk Assessment, uh, they have listed all the pandemics since 1918. The mortality of this one is right down the bottom, lower than any of the others. And, and I would happily take that risk. Okay. And, and if you were an asymptomatic, asymptomatic. let's imagine you, you were carrying the virus and you were asymptomatic and you carried on in, uh, your daily life and you went to the theatre and you sat next to someone who then did catch the virus from you and die from it. Would you think that that's part of an everyday risk that it was fine for them to have taken? Well, it's up to them whether they want to take it. Uh, I would be running the risk of catching uh, the virus from them if they're asymptomatic and I'm prepared to take that risk. They don't have to go to the theatre. If they're not prepared to take it, presumably they won't go to the theatre. We are entitled to take risks with our own lives, especially when basically life is only worth living if you are uh, prepared to engage in social activities which inevitably involve risk. That is part of life. Have you observed the rules of the lockdown to date? Yes. Completely? Yes. yes. Grudgingly, it sounds like. Well, I disapprove of the lockdown. You can call that grudging if you like. But I comply with the law because I don't wish to place a weapon in the hands of people like you. <laughs> I mean, I'm merely interested in, in you know, whether, whether the, the, what you're putting forward is and how that compares with the way that you have lived your, uh, lived your life in these last few weeks. But I wonder if you do think that Listen, everyone I, would make... I a very public spokesman for a particular point of view, and I'm not going to undermine my own position by disregarding the law. Yes. I just wonder whether you think that in an entirely voluntary system, whether people would make sensible decisions. The Prime Minister has placed an emphasis on the good sense of the British people, but do you think we are a society that can make sensible decisions as individuals while protecting public health as a whole as well? Yes, of course we are. We're grown-ups. We're a sophisticated society, uh, and undoubtedly there will be a few people uh, who do not make sensible decisions. But you cannot imprison the entire population simply because a small minority is not being very sensible with their own safety. So what would you say to the people who've been at, at anti-lockdown protests in places like Hyde Park in London? I think that uh, if they're opposed to the lockdown, uh, I th have some sympathy with them. This lockdown uh, is destroying livelihoods on a massive scale. Uh, it is doing enormous damage. Uh, and in my view, it, it has never been a price worth paying uh, for the uh, not very impressive results that can be directly attributed to the lockdown. Lord Sumption, thank you very much.